friends and welcome to another video. This time we are doing another passion for games and we're doing carrier command on the IBM PC. And joining me once again is my good friend Sasamisa1806 and you probably want to hold tight for this because the way he plays this game it does not hang about. So hello mate. Yeah, hello there everybody. Yeah as Chris says I think first of all I should mention that Lucosa and his review of this, the Amiga version of this game, is the reason I'm having a go again at the PC version. So I'll put that out there straight away. Yeah, as Chris says, this is a very fast playthrough. I'm playing the PC version because unlike the ST and Amiga versions, uh, it's got a time warp feature which allows you to essentially pass time 30 times faster than normal which makes travel between the islands a lot quicker as you'll see when the game starts. The ST and Amiga versions are much more drawn out. I can remember when I played it originally you're talking it days to complete it. <laughs> yeah it did take a while didn't it to get between the islands. Yeah the ST version especially was incredibly slow. Yeah, it's, it, it, actually, for an early early PC game, I mean, it's moving quite well uh, in terms of 3D. I mean, I, I often think of uh, 3D games on the PC really starting with Doom and Wolfenstein. There, you don't realise, like you know, a few years before, at the end of the 80s, the PC had that much more power. Yeah, it's true. I mean, this this isn't bad at all, considering in 1988. I mean, we're talking like pre-Sound Blaster era. So yeah, don't expect a lot of sound in this game. You get a few beeps and boops from the PC speaker. I mean, I'm actually running this in DOSBox, but you know, it can't emulate what never existed. Now this is true. So what I'm gonna do is I have got a recording of the original audio cassette that came with the Amiga version that you were supposed to play in the background while you were playing the game. And I'm probably gonna loop that and run it underneath because this is uh, really quiet, this game. <laughs> Yeah, you get a few laser sounds. The, even the aircraft and the walruses don't have sound like they did in the ST and Amiga versions. The PC is... Uh, the, the graphics, it's VGA 16 colours, so it looks pretty much the same as both the ST and Amiga version, but sound, yeah, we're talking practically non-existent. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so that's going to be the, the uh, music. It's by um, Dave Lowe, the music. I'll give that, give that credit now. I'll also put that in the description. Yeah, uh, yeah, good bit of music. Yeah, it's a nice tune. I mean, the 64 version, exactly the same piece. I mean, I do sort of recall the uh, Amiga version, but my brother recorded the 64 version on several tapes, so I, I remember that well. <laughs> and it's exactly the same tune. Uh, a bit shorter. I mean, it's only 45 seconds on the 64. Yeah, the audio tape's over four minutes. So here we go. Take over, Jeff. Right, essentially I've gone for the strategy game. This basically means you start with a single island, uh, Vulcan, the, the base island. The enemy, the enemy carrier starts with eight islands. Probably just to give him a bit more of a chance. Right, the first thing I'll say is the PC version is much more difficult than the ST and Amiga versions. The enemy carrier is much more aggressive. Uh, Apart from, apart from the time warp facility to speed the game up, uh, your carrier is also much faster than it was in the uh, ST and Amiga versions. Now, the first thing I'll explain is, as you can see me launching all these walruses here, you know, despite the fact I've barely left my base island and I'm launching a manta as well. What I'm doing here is I'm attempting to split my forces. I'll send two walruses and a manta in one direction to take two islands up to the, the top of the top of the map here while I take the carrier in the opposite direction thereby taking more than one island uh, I'm just quickly setting the uh, priorities there for damage control I put the laser on maximum because if the laser ever goes inoperative your carrier is defenseless yeah that's not good so quickly set the supplier priorities. The only thing you really need at the beginning are lots of ACCBs, automatic command center builders. Without them, you can't take the islands. So that's the first thing you should ask for and carry a few, obviously. You're gonna need a good supply of that. Then I set course for the nearest island, uh, Cerberus. Yeah, I can see what a difference the time yeah. warp makes. Time warp, to... time warp is 30 times faster than normal. You do not want to engage the time warp facility when the enemy carrier is nearby. 
Unlike the ST and Omega versions, he will attack you and destroy you in seconds before you can even disengage the time warp. So if he, if you're aware of him, say within one grid square of your current location, don't use the time warp, silly. But what I'm doing here is, once, once I get close to this island, now you'd think like, well, go near the island, launch a warus, you know, put your ACCB down, then bring your warus back, and no, we don't bother with any of that. In order to save time, as soon as we get to Cerberus, stop the carrier, launch the warus, warus three in this case, because the other two warruses are out. You know, put it on course for the island, wait, And as soon as it says War of Three is in Canada Beach, set the carrier going straight away. You know, just abandon the war, drop the ACCB, time warp. Right, because you can make more vehicles in this game, exactly. can't you? So you haven't got to worry about keeping them. Well, once the Warus goes out of range of the carrier, I think it's something like 12 kilometers, it's destroyed to prevent the enemy from hacking it. So already I've just lost the Warus, <laughs> <laughs> sacrificed it. Uh, you can also see that Warus, uh, well, Warus, Warus is one and two are now in range of. I think that's supposed to be Bryony or Byrine. I can never remember how to pronounce that. Uh, now I've changed the course of Warus one towards Elwood to take both islands, and you set the Manta. The Manta has got a long-range comms pod. As long as there's a, a Manta with a long-range comms pod within 12 kilometres of the Waruses. They can be anywhere on the map. They don't need to be near the carrier. As long as that manta is shadowing them. The mantas move slightly quicker than the walruses, even at their slowest speed. So you've got to keep track of it. Make sure it don't go out of range of the walruses, because they do, both walruses will explode. Another thing you'll want to watch as well, that you don't crash the walruses into each other. As you can see there, telemetry's weak on that one. Yeah. It's, it's gone out of range. So when you look at the map, I'm right in thinking that a, a green island is neutral, red is the enemy and blue is yours, yeah? Exactly. Right. You see, I've already lost that other war, so I'm briny, it's already been destroyed because it's gone out of range. I've just sent Warus 4 to the next island. <laughs> see, I've already taken four islands. Yeah, you're kind of continually overlapping yourself, yeah. aren't you? By doing this, it allows you to take the map faster, stockpile your resources and your equipment faster, and basically be ready for the carrier at a much earlier stage of the game. Because if you let the enemy carrier get too far down the map, taking too many islands, it will make your job really difficult. I mean, you can win two different ways in this game. You can destroy the enemy carrier, and that will immediately end the game. Or you can take all the islands, or you can do both. Yeah, we're doing both in this video, but it's a yeah. bit, bit of a shortened down version. I mean, you saw the drone being uh, yeah. set out there. Basically, I asked for supplies. I changed uh, Carissa, Charissa, to the stockpile island, and then moved the supplies to that island, and the drone throws them out to the carrier. I only asked for fuel and ACCBs, because at the beginning, you've only got one base island, and that can only make limited supplies for you. If you ask for too much, it'll end up making nothing. Right, what I'm doing now is I'm sending out three Waruses to Magma. Two Waruses have got ACCBs and the fourth, fourth war, well, the third Warus has got a fuel pod. The idea is to sacrifice one Warus, refueling another Warus so it can go twice as far, allowing me to take both those islands over the right hand side there, Magma and Igneous, I think it is. And again, you've got a man with a comms pod shadowing them. So, it's a cunning plan. So, yeah, this is basically... I mean, I remember when I played this on the ship, it was like on a, it was a 25 megahertz SX, I think it was, uh, during the third year of the apprenticeship, yeah. Uh, it was installed on the computers at work, and most people watching me play this, well, they, they were playing games like Tetris, and they saw me playing this, and they had no idea what I was doing. They literally... Yeah, I made a slight cock-up here. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you, Jeff. I've watched you play this game countless times over the years. I've got a fucking idea what you're doing most of it. The mistake I made here was I tried to make the Warruses take a shortcut across the island, and yeah, it's already built that uh, drone. That drone. All oh, right, so it crashed into that. Yeah, so they crashed into that <laughs> dome. It, the, the places where it builds the things are kind of random. I mean, most of the time, the stuff wouldn't have been built yet. 
but it, well, he had to build it right in the plume way I was going. So I'd drive the walruses round it and then reset the courses. I mean, it only damages them a little bit. I think it takes about 25% of their structure. Uh, vehicles and aircraft, well, vehicles, aircraft, walruses, they will go slower the more damage they take. But I think 75, you still get more or less full speed in water. On land, I think they go 110, 110 knots on, in water, about 50. As you can see, all the walruses are all going that way now. Uh, the other one's just arrived at Elwood. I appreciate that it might be difficult to actually keep track of exactly what I'm doing here because I've got my forces all over the place. I've got a walrus over at Elwood. I've got two, three walruses going towards Magma and you've got the carrier sitting off uh, Charissa. So that man, oh, you don't need him anymore, just crash him. Because <laughs> you, can't, you can't have more than one comms pod out at one time. So you can only ever have one mantle with one comms pod. You can't have two, it will not let you launch. But yeah, once you've sent that commander out, that's it. You're going to get the carrier onto its next island. See, I've already taken four islands there. Yeah? Uh, I took, I think I've got two resource, one factory and one defence. Uh, the islands are pretty self-explanatory. Resource islands, they dig up your resources. Uh, they make your fuel and provide the resources for factory islands to make equipment. You need both. Defence islands, uh, give you a small amount of resources, but they cannot make equipment. They are purely defensive. They've got a lot more missile launchers. They've got uh, aircraft. They're very difficult to take, as you'll see later in the video. They're extremely difficult to take, uh, defence islands. So you want to put them in strategic locations, you know, where two islands go to one, say, so, it will make it more difficult for the enemy carrier to get past them. That time warp feature is very handy. It is. I remember when I was playing it at work, it was like, man, I wish we had this in the ST version. Yeah, actually, <laughs> we, we should we should talk about that because back when we was like teenagers and we had STs, literally all of us had carrier commands. Yeah, it, around your place was the first time I ever saw the game and I was instantly taken with it because it's strategic. I've always loved strategy games. But... Uh, it was Dean I actually got a copy of. I admit that I didn't have the ST version, but he did give me a photocopy and a manual. I'm pretty sure I've actually still got that photocopy. I'm, it's pretty moth-eaten now, a bit of tattered. I think the pages have fallen off the back of it. But I'm pretty sure I've still got it somewhere. Well, somewhere I've got the boxed, um, complete, well, the, the new sort of cheap version they did that's got Amiga and ST version on it. Uh, not me, Amiga and PC, not ST. You could play the IBM version or the Amiga version. I remember the first time I tried to play this, I think it was on my little 233 uh, megahertz, my first PC, and it ran at about a million miles an hour. Yeah. It was so fast. It it's worked. not frame locked. No, it's it, not. <laughs> DOSBox obviously takes care of all those problems. This DOSBox is frame locked. I mean, it's the perfect way to play old PC games. You don't have to worry about that 640K limit and connecting a mouse and getting your sound blaster to work. I remember trying to get games like Skull Keep to work properly. It was just awful on a real on real hardware. You know, because you'd be slightly out of that 640K limit and the game would just not run. Yeah. I suppose while you're uh, just capturing a few islands here, we can mention some of the other versions. Um, like the way the, the Commodore 64 version is a... Yeah, it's 2D, isn't it? It's, it's, it's the same game, but it's in 2D. It's the same game, but it's 2D. It's unique in a way, because the Spectrum and Amstrad versions, they still maintain the 3D aspect. The Spectrum's obviously kind of lacking in colour, but it is pretty much the same game. I suppose the Spectrum one's much faster than the Amstrad one. The yeah. Amstrad's really slow compared to the Specky version. That's true. But the 64 version, yeah, it's worth mentioning that it, it is... It is the unique, unique version because it took D. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even realise it was the same game until we looked at it earlier on. Yeah, I mean, the ST version was the first version I ever played. Oh, Warus One destroyed. Yeah. I've got to admit though, back back in like '88 when we was when we when this was new, I mean, this was quite a revolutionary game to look at. It was kind of like. Before this, this sort of looking game for me was stuff like Driller on the C64, yeah. which 
well, we've, you know, runs like a brick in shit, and I'm being very generous to it now. It is, it's very, very slow. I mean, those games clearly were designed with uh, my 16-bit computers in mind. What I'm doing here is uh, refueling the other Warriors. As you can see, they're both very low on fuel. You don't want to crash into the Warriors, because if you do, both will be destroyed. You have to kind of get close and then, like, do that. <laughs> All right, you can't do that on autopilot or anything. No, that has to be done manually. You can then get him out of the way. You can see the men are flying over on the radar. Yeah. See him on his way. Obviously, that Warriors now is kind of doomed because it's got no fuel left. But by doing that, essentially, I've allowed that Warriors to travel two grid squares instead of one. Yeah, well, that's a good plan. I wrote Tokamak here. I mean, sometimes I will bring the Warriors back to the carrier. Not necessarily to save Warriors, but because I've run out of fuel for the carrier. So I've got to bring the drone out anyway. So you might as well bring the Warriors back. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So you, know, you program that as the stockpile island and now just wait. I mean, it takes a little while for the stocks to come over. You don't want to tax it too much. Don't start asking for 999 ACCBs because if you do that, you'll end up making nothing. Yeah. You haven't got the resources, you haven't got the islands. So you've got to you know, not be too greedy, first of all. Wait till you've built a few islands. It takes time for the islands to construct. I don't actually show this in this playthrough because I'm going as fast as possible. But it takes time for the structures to be built on the islands and the island will not be functional until it's constructed. Yeah, I mean, this is effectively a speed run you're doing here, isn't it? Yeah. This wasn't my first run. This was, I had a, I played this over about a week period after I read Lukosa's uh, review. Got me all nostalgic for it again. And some of the runs were, yeah, a lot of them ended in failure. I got destroyed by the enemy carrier more times than I can count. Sometimes I would literally isolate myself from base and run out of fuel because I was watching what I was doing. Sometimes I'd end up crashing the warriors into each other. <laughs> I do make a few bloopers in this particular run, but this was probably one of the better runs because this one you do actually see the, the enemy counter, the enemy carrier being encountered. Some, a lot of the other recordings I did, it would just say the enemy carrier was destroyed off screen. And sometimes. The enemy carrier is attacking one of my islands and it will get attacked by the island's defences and then it will suddenly be carry destroyed, but I weren't there. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, not a very interesting encounter. That's definitely something you want to see. I can't believe how many islands you've got already. I mean, it'll come as no surprise at all that I wasn't that good at this game either. I mean, I've, I've got the strategy and the planning, it's just all the, uh, all the clicking and... Yeah, it's, flitting through the icons that used to, it used to stimmy me. It's certainly very involved. I mean, you can literally go from islands one after another, taking them one at a time if you want. But by doing that, you'll end up you'll end up with about twenty islands, and the enemy will end up with forty, and you'll be so outmatched that you'll have forty of his enemy islands to take, and that's going to be a lot of work. You really want to take them when they're free, because that's just a matter of driving a warrus onto it and sticking an ACC bead down. I should probably mention uh, that the. This game wasn't without its bugs. The ST and Amiga versions especially, they... Well, the ST version, it was actually possible to ground the carrier on the island <laughs> and actually get stuck. Your fault? Yeah. The ST version was also horribly slow going between the islands. Uh, both the ST and Amiga versions also suffered from a ghosting bug, which was kind of annoying. If you see what I'm doing in this playthrough. I'm taking the Warruses very far from the carrier using the long range cons pod on the manor. If you try to do that on the ST and Amiga versions, the Warrus will crash into the carrier even though they're nowhere near it. Almost as if there's a duplicate carrier a grid square away. Right, And gotcha. it, re it results in, you could almost call it a, an invisible wall because that's what it feels like you're hitting. But the PC version doesn't have that bug. The PC version, the carrier will steer around the islands. So if you put the cross on the wrong side of the island, the carrier will literally go round the island. But the ST and Amiga versions, it will try to go through the island. Yeah, now, it, I, I'm not sure if it was a discovery. When we were looking at the Commodore 64 version earlier on, 
I'm fairly sure I was sodden about trying to get a walrus going, and I put a dot on the other side of an island, and the walrus, walrus went round the island. Yeah, instead of going instead across it. Instead of going across it. So, yeah. it looks like, I'm, I'm, I don't really, I don't think you do even really, we've never really messed with the eight bits that much for this. No, not at all. My, my brother played it a little bit, but he was kind of disappointed with it. It's a big ask though to get an 8-bit computer. I mean, I'm surprised it looks as good as it does on the Spectrum, to be honest with you, and move, and move as well as it does. I know the, uh, the Z8 is, you know, is, is a fairly good processor for an 8-bit computer, but even so, the amount of graphics that's chucking around is very impressive. Extra. What I'm doing here is I've taken that island in the middle, genetics, and I've sent the remaining warrants over to Socrates. Well, I'm going over to uh, Avenus, I think. Yeah, so you have, you've basically split your forces to take, yeah. gain as much ground as possible. By doing this, it's actually to take islands faster than the enemy carrier. I'm pretty sure by the time I actually go up to Thermopylae, which I used to call th Thermopylae, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was terrible for pronunciation when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, Thermopylae. I think I heard Dr. Bashir say it in DS9, it was like Battle of Thermopylae, I thought. So that's how you say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, if you can get up to Thermopylae and stick a defense island there, you can really bottleneck the enemy carrier and it becomes very difficult for him to get past the defense island. That's pretty much the tactic in this gameplay, in this uh, playthrough. In several of my earlier playthroughs, the enemy carrier decided to take a shortcut around the top of the map and it caused me all manner of grief. But here he literally tries to come right through the centre and I pretty much corner him. I get really lucky in this playthrough, that's why it came out as quick as it did. You don't always get that lucky. The enemy carrier can be really unpredictable at times. I should also mention he doesn't appear on radar, doesn't appear on the map at all. Uh, you can see his manners on your radar, but you can't see him, he's radar shielded. So you literally have to f find him by sight. You can see the islands he's taken, they light up red, yeah, don't they? you can yeah. see the islands he's taken. It gives you an idea of where he generally yeah. is. His speed is comparable to yours. In the ST and Amiga versions, I'm pretty sure your carrier was a little bit quicker than him, but only in deep water. The PC version doesn't suffer from the deep water problem. In the ST and Amiga versions, you can only go 44 knots when in range of an island, when any of your mantas are launched, any walruses are launched, or your drones are out, uh, and 22 knots in reverse. 178 knots when you're in deep water and everything's docked. But in the PC version, you can go full speed anywhere. All right. So I don't even bother docking the drones most of the time, I just leave them out. But the ST and Amiga versions, you had to dock the drones, you had to make sure nothing was yeah, actually... I, I noticed when that, that map was zoomed out right and there was one great uh, green island right over to the left. Yeah, they are really spaced out. A splinter, the northernmost island, is two grid squares away. You can barely reach it with a full tank of carrier fuel. So there are some really remote... Really remote islands, Charybdis. I thought that was Cherry Biddy. <laughs> Charybdis. He's down in the bottom right corner. Yeah. As you can see, I'm slowly moving up towards that and Nyades there. Uh, bypassing that island there, so I'll, I think that's Archeron. I'll send out something as I'm passing it. As long as you're sort of in range of the island, that's not too far for the wars to reach it before going out of telemetry range. I mean, I'm just out of range of it there, but I can probably just about reach it. Uh, the PC, although I mentioned there are bugs in the ST and Amiga version, the PC version also has bugs as well. Now this could be a product of DOSBox, it could be a, because of the game itself. But basically in this playthrough, you notice I always stop the carrier before launching a walrus. I don't know why, but on some of my playthroughs, I think one of my early playthroughs, I was three islands from the end of the game, and the game literally just exited to dust, all because the carrier was moving when I launched the walrus. It's come up with a divide by zero error. 
happens. Yeah. Essentially, I always stop the carrier before launching a war, it's just in case it decides to exit. Well, yeah, especially, I mean, three islands from the end. Yeah. I mean, that? That's a good couple of that hours. Was actually a good, that was actually a very good carrier battle as well, because the enemy carrier, it showed up at an island I was taking, and it pulled up right alongside me, yeah. and well, pretty much I was shooting him to death with a laser cannon, he was shooting me back with mantas and missiles, and then he tried to run away because he was damaged. But by that point, my carrier was so shot up, I couldn't fire back. So I sent out a warus, and he was moving away incredibly slowly. And I managed to catch him with a warus and shot a couple of missiles in him and destroyed him. Nice. And yeah, the game crashed three islands from the end. I had still got that playthrough, I just haven't uploaded it. But yeah, another bug on the PC version as well is the uh, command center virus bomb. Uh, it's an item you can put on the walrus, and basically if you pull onto an island, instead of destroying an enemy base, if you go up to the opening that's on the front of the ACCB and shoot the virus bomb in it, it immediately converts it to a friendly island, which is very useful. Yeah, it, it, means, so. it means the island's already fully constructed and you've taken it over. It's very difficult to do that with a defence island because the blasted drones will shoot your walrus down before it gets close enough unless you destroy the dome first. But with Factory and Resource Islands, as long as you stay away from the missile launchers on the island, which will choke back, or you destroy them with lasers or missiles, you can actually take the islands fairly easily. But in this particular playthrough, I avoid the virus bomb because it has a nasty tendency to freeze the game. Yeah, no. I mean, it's a 50-50 prospect. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So I just avoid using the virus bombs and just blow all the ACCBs up. Coming over towards Beacon now. Yeah? I mean, first of all, the, st the strategy game is obviously a lot more slow paced because it's more about you and him taking islands. If you play the action game, you start at Thermopylae and he's got half the map, you've got half the map. And Thermopylae is one of his and it's a defense island, unfortunately. <laughs> so this, the action game really does start out as an action game. It's not uncommon to start the game and immediately the island starts shooting you. Yeah, I don't think I ever played. I think I only ever played the strategy game. I seem to remember. I mean, it's been a long while since I've played it. I seem to remember the map being mostly green, like that was when when yeah. this first started. So perhaps I didn't ever play the action game. I really can't remember. I've played them both. The action game is pretty much the same thing. Uh, the enemy carrier, even though it's an action game, he still starts in the top right hand corner which is kind of strange. You'd think like he'd be the last island he took, but no, he actually starts in the top right hand corner, but you start Thermopylae in the middle of the map. As you can see, I've already got five of each island, but four, four defense there. Yeah. yeah, so effectively the action game's a lot quicker then. Yeah, because you've already got quite a trouble with the, the uh, action game as well, is the islands are kind of, the ones you've missed are all over the place. So you've got to, you know, you've still got to, well, just go back on yourself to get oh, the islands right. you missed because it doesn't follow the same strategy I'm using here. But yeah, it looks like here I've got like a bunch of war. <laughs> yeah, I've got like, I think I've got another three horses here. One's with a fuel pod again. So I can take Odris here, which is uh, diagonally upwards. It's so that I can. Consumes here, so I can take that island there, Odris here, and then what the idea is to go up to Thermopylae, send a Warus and a Manta out to take Stavros, which is diagonally up from Thermopylae. Both make, both make both of them defense islands, and then wait at Stavros with all your Mantas and hope he attacks it because that way you can nab him. It doesn't always work, and back basically loop round with your carrier and take all the islands up towards the left hand side of the map. It's really all I'm doing. I'm just trying to maximize maximize uh, resource usage and take as many islands as quickly as possible. Well oh, that's that's the strategy part of it, isn't it? Yeah, it's very similar to uh, another game that you know, I've kind of been nostalgic for lately, Midwinter. Which again, I watched Lukosa's video, and it made me want to play that. I mean, it's it's certainly not going to be a three-hour playthrough. It's going to be more like double that. I mean, the PC version again has got the advantage that you can like speed up DOSBox to get between the locations a bit quicker. But it is one of the strategy games that is 
it would take a bit of time. Yeah, well, I'll be, I'll look out for that. Yeah, it's something I do intend to come back to. I mean, to be honest, I mean, if the, if the, if the Omega version had had time warp and it didn't have that annoying ghosting bug, it probably would have been the best version because of the extra sound effects, the engine noises. I mean, the PC version, as you can hear, it's, you're not getting any sound at all. No, you know, that, that, that's why we've got the uh, the Amiga tape underneath it, because... Yeah, I mean, you do get laser sounds, and you do get the sound when you drop the OCCB, your collision sounds as well, but it is very, very sparse. Yeah, also, well, you know what I think about having a sound in games. I mean, you know, I put a SID chip in everything, but... Um... Yeah, it certainly can make or break a game, I will say that. I, mean, I wouldn't be such a fan of Tower Project if it hadn't been for the music. Well, so you haven't encountered any enemy things at all yet, have you? No, because the enemy carrier is still making its way down the map. Yeah, yeah, I've kind of uh, lost the war, so I'm supposed to be refueling. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they can end up got to make sure as well that it definitely isn't moving. I mean, I tend to use a combination of keyboard and mouse. Don't rely on clicking on the speed bar because if it's going slowly and it bumps into you, you know, it blows both auruses up. So you want to be very careful. You can use the cursor keys to drag the speed up and down. I think your use of uh, walruses and mantas in this kind of reminds me of the runabouts in Deep Space Nine. Oh, it's blown up, make another one. <laughs> I do tend to be a bit cavalier, I think, <laughs> with uh, certainly not environmentally friendly, is it? <laughs> <laughs> the only amount of resources I'm burning up. You notice how now I've like, asked it to make a load of missiles and comms pods and uh, extra ACCBs. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how, so, you know, you know some mantas, mantas and walruses. Walruses, I burn up constantly. That's the thing, I suppose, you know, the more supply islands you've got, it's yeah. just the resources. I mean, that's just why there. I put 999. Don't, don't leave it at that, though, because otherwise it literally will make 999 of them. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's another bug in the PC version as well. If, if it goes up to 999, you get an overrun error and it will crash the game. Yeah, all right. So don't leave it at 999, as soon as you've got enough. There's 64 islands, so theoretically you shouldn't need more than 64 ACCBs. Assuming the enemy don't destroy your blooming islands. Yeah, well, you wouldn't get a bug like that in a, in a game today, would you? Because, uh, well, we get to test the games from there and then they just release a patch. <laughs> yeah, true, you know. I mean, Christ, the f patches. <laughs> First time I think I came across them, I mean, even the idea of an updated version was Paradroid, wasn't it? Fast Paradroid. And I yeah. suppose you had f uh, Frontier First Contact came with a came with a, a f uh, first encounters, and it yeah that came with a patch disc on the PC. <laughs> and I suppose a uh, Captive when Captive first came out, there was a nasty little bug in that, which actually prevented you from getting further than about uh, base three of the second mission because the coats were appearing under fire so Crowder basically well, patched her. Talking, talking of captive that's that's a game we're gonna have to do in this series because I'll tell you what people if you think he's mad whizzing about on the bleeding mouse on this playing the game you want to see him play captive. Yeah I suppose it's a game I've put more hours in, into than even Dungeon Master I mean that's saying so I think so we're almost at Thermopylae now, which is pretty much the centre of the map. And this is the island you definitely want to take because it's it's a bottleneck. All the islands are kind of joined to it, so the enemy's the enemy carrier's got to come through this. So he, he doesn't have to come through this way. He, he could decide to go up the map if you're unlucky. Sometimes he'll go down the map towards uh, Isolus and Medusa. So Thermopylae is kind of like your Trafalgar then, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good position because you can see the islands are all converging on that point. There's been a lot of uh, Greek naming in this. Or is that what the programmer's Greek or something? Or is it just, just something they went with? Do you happen to know? 
I don't actually. I always assume the game was by <coughs> Mike Singleton. But it actually isn't. I mean, Midwin is Mike Singleton, but I was wrong about that. It's, it's not Mike Singleton. But yeah, the islands, I know one of the islands is named after a programmer, actually. Yeah, I think the other ones, are pro some of them are just jokes, like tax haven and traffic. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, things like Thermopylae and uh, Medusa and yeah. stuff like that. There's a lot of, a lot of kind of Greek yeah, mytholo Bacchus. mythological names. Definitely, definitely a lot of Greek names in there. But some of them are basically just jokes. I mean, his island's called Nemesis, his base island. But yeah, what I'm doing now is I'm basically sending out all four, all four manners, all loaded up with missiles. Missiles are convenient because they home in on the target and they do a fair amount of damage. You really are loading them up, aren't you? <clears throat> you can carry seven missiles, three in the middle and two on each wing. You can't do triples on the wings. You could put lasers on them, but the trouble with lasers is they don't do very much damage and it means you have to go slow to be able to hit anything. Yeah, you them. have to stay on target with a laser. Yeah, which you? means you're making yourself a target. That's fine against a ground, a, a non-moving ground-based target, but it's no good against an air target because they'll shoot you down too easily. There's wars going over there. Just a tree. <laughs> the trees just do minimal damage. You don't need to shoot the trees. They will disappear anyway as the island's constructed. It's a good idea to put the ACCB right in the middle of this island because that way it's more difficult for the enemy carrier to attack it. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that this game probably isn't sponsored by Greenpeace. <laughs> the story was actually quite interesting behind it, the idea of the world being in an energy crisis and they discovered this chain of archipelago. And they discovered a chain of islands where there were bountiful resources. Unfortunately, there was an enemy faction that also wanted the resources and they steal one of the carriers. Uh, the ACC Omega. Oh, Omega. Right. You've got the ACC Epsilon. Now, their carrier's more advanced than yours because it's radar shielded. Typical. And he hasn't got Warruses either. His Manners can literally drop his ACC base. His Manners are very difficult to shoot down, so it's not really worth bothering with them. Just concentrate on the enemy. <laughs> oh, look, another destroyed Warrus. <laughs> a Manor. I was at a Manor that time. I just saw yeah. destroyed. <laughs> yeah, basically, that would have meant the Warrus that was in range of it would have been destroyed as well. But yeah, what you want to do now is you know, put all four mantas just out of or just on the other side of Thermopylae. You keep Manta 4 back because that's the one with the comms pod. You don't want to lose that one because if you do, all the other three mantas will crash. See, I mean, on the ST and Omega versions here, you do actually get sa air well, aircraft sounds, but the PC, you don't get anything. <laughs> so how long does the fuel last on the Mantas then? You yeah, can get about two grid squares with a Manta. Yeah, if you're just like flying around, I mean, what's that in terms of time? You know, ten minutes, half hour? Depends on your speed. Right. I okay. mean, if you're flying at absolute minimum speed, it does last a fair amount of time. I mean, long enough for a Warus to get a grid square, and I mean, on the timer, that's like a good 15 minutes. So they don't run out of fuel quickly. I mean, a carrier can two grid squares on a full tank. Uh, Warriors can go one grid square on a full tank. The Manders can go. So you can see a defence line has been constructed yeah. there. Uh, yeah, the Warriors can. Uh, the Manders can go two grid squares. The, the Manders go about 675 knots, very quick. That um, bit of construction we saw half a minute ago there. It's actually nice to see the wireframes being built because I was. Uh, I was showing Jeff the uh, Addis our fastest run on a souped up A1200 earlier on, and the AGA chipset was stopping the wireframes from being built. So there was this stuff you could crash into and you couldn't even see it. Yeah, I don't think it was designed with AGA in mind. It didn't have to move fast though, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's about twice normal speed. At least. Almost unplayable. Yeah. Now I'll start coming back on myself with a carrier. Leave those. I think those are uh, lost wars for one. Which, does, which doesn't matter because the, the other warus is on its way to Stavros now. Uh, with all four all four men of shadow in it. While the carrier backtracks to Storm first of all. But yeah, this is where it steers around the island. If you actually watch it, it will steer around the island. Instead of crashing into the island, it will literally go in the island, <laughs> which is pretty clever. The ST and Omega versions, it would have tried to ram into the island. Yeah, your carrier has been destroyed, or your carrier is well, grounded. Yeah, message. basically, yeah, the carrier grounds and then it backs up. But if you're really unlucky, it will get stuck. 
and essentially it will destroy your carrier because every time you bound it, it damages your service structure by 25%. Essentially the carrier can have every system destroyed except for the service structure. As soon as that falls to zero, the carrier is destroyed and it's game over. Wars run, destroyed again. Yeah, I'll go for a walrus, it's like anything, yeah. <laughs> it always seems to be poor old Walrus One that's, that's copying it. Yeah, I must go. I must go through probably 50, 50 Walruses yeah. in the whole playthrough. Yeah, not so many manners. So he's just he's just taken Fornax, which is just above the middle of the map. So he's not far away now from where our four manners are. See, they're not quite at Stavros. They're on the way. Yeah. That's arriving at Bacchus. And I'm going to send it over to Bell Tempest. I'm taking the islands over to the left now. Yeah, so... It's, I mean, effectively, the style that you're playing, you're trying to draw the enemy carrier out, aren't you, gradually? Yeah. Basically, the enemy carrier, a lot of the time, if you're in the vicinity of an island, he will go a different way if there's a few island somewhere else. He won't actively come after you unless he's sure of a victory. I mean, the best way for him to attack you in the PC version, especially, because in the SD and Amiga versions, the enemy carrier would not engage you. You would not be like in open water and the enemy carrier comes up behind you and stuff, because he can't catch you at full speed. But in the PC version, he's quicker than you and he will come after you. But generally, if you're near an island that's already under your control, he will go somewhere else. That makes sense. So yeah, what I'm doing here is by taking my carrier in the other direction, over towards Bacchus, Bell Tempest, and leaving Stavros free, it's now like making that attempting target. Yeah, yeah you're effectively laying the bait to draw yeah, him out. Yeah, and baiting him. It doesn't always work. I mean, sometimes he'll just go in a different direction, just be annoying. But uh, here, he actually does take the bait. I've got plenty of ACCBs, plenty of comms pods, plenty of missiles. Yeah, you're not short of a missile or under, are you? <laughs> yeah, the Manta missiles are, are fairly weak. The carrier's got very strong missiles, but you can only fire them from the rear of the carrier. We'll see some of that later in the video. I mean, at the moment, I haven't had to take an enemy island. Right, all the manners have all reached their destination now. So they're all over Stavros. Or they're near it. I mean, they all go into holding patterns as soon as they reach uh, their destination. They won't actually crash or anything. Yeah, they just circle, don't they? They just circle. So as long as you keep them fairly spaced out, they won't. Because I've had them crash into each other in the past. <laughs> Again, which is embarrassing because it just destroys both planes. I mean, everything in this game is robot controlled. You're literally the only person on the carrier. The carrier can repair itself automatically. The, the Mantas and Morrises are all robot controlled. Uh, I'm not sure about the enemy carrier. I think that's robot controlled as well, but it's under control of the enemy forces. Yeah. But in an out and out battle, you can win if you take him on head to head but his manners really are nasty you know they will pepper your carrier with missiles and it's very difficult to fight him and them off at the same time so the best strategy is to take him on with your manners the st and omega version it was very difficult to actually approach the enemy carrier because nine times out of ten as soon as he sights you he will run away and you can't catch him while you're in range of an island you move too slowly but the pc version Sometimes you just get lucky. You turn up in at the right in the right place at the right time, and there he is off the island. Yeah. But a lot of the time, you will have to try to do what I'm doing in this video, baiting. Yeah, it's certainly a, a different play style to uh, the, the, the lot that I've seen. Yeah, the people that work were the same. They just didn't. They just didn't get what I was doing. Yeah, I mean, if, if you were to just watch it, it is a case of what you're doing. But the way you've explained it, I, I, you know, I get what you're doing. You know, the, the switch and bait tactics. Yeah, it was pretty much the same fit, same way I played Midwinter as well. The idea is to kind of gather your forces and then attack Shining Hollow from multiple vectors. Don't just try to drive everybody in 
you know, in the same direction, because if you do that, you're probably just going to get shot down and not get anywhere. You see, now I've got all four manners. Right, the runway's been built now, so what we do now is land the planes. Are you doing this manually or is this computer? Yeah, you basically, it's not too difficult to land. As long as you don't bump too badly on the runway. If you hit the runway at full speed, you literally bounce off it. Mm. It will damage your manor. Uh, the runways will refuel you, but they will not repair damage. Do they rearm or anything? No, you can't right. rearm either. It's a shame you can't actually refuel the walruses. I'm a carrier for that now. <laughs> you, know, you can maybe carry fuel from a manta to the carrier, but no, you can't. If your carrier gets stranded at the range of an island or the enemy somehow cuts you off from your stockpile island, uh, you literally are stranded. Yeah. You cannot use a manta or walrus fuel to refuel the carrier. Now the Spectrum version, when I was watching a guy play the Spectrum version, he was deliberately destroying all of his extra equipment, all his extra stores on the carrier, so he could carry more fuel. Because the Spectrum version, you only get a limited amount of payload for the whole carrier. Right. And fuel takes slots, and equipment takes slots. Now in the ST and Amiga and PC versions, it's all separate. You know, fuel is one bit and equipment's another bit. But in the Spectrum version, you get a payload. So he was deliberately destroying all these extra mantas and walruses so he could carry more fuel so he could get further on the map. Uh, that was his strategy. So, right, so you've landed all of them. What, what, what's the uh, planning behind all the landing? Well, the landing's obviously so they're all refueled. Now all you do is wait. Right. Until gotcha. it says Stavros is being attacked. Now, obviously, they're vulnerable while they're on the runway. Yeah. You know, because they're just sitting there. Like, but it is a defence island, so if the enemy carrier comes anywhere near it, all the drones that have come out, come out of that dome, and they will attack the enemy carrier's men, as everything. So that will draw some fire. But yeah, essentially now it's a waiting game. Kind of hoping that he attacks Stavros. Now, he doesn't always. Sometimes he'll do something different. So in the meantime, you're sending the carrier and the warships yeah, around to take just the rest. taking more islands. Because the objective is to take all 64 islands. And I've already taken about half of them. Uh, amazingly quick time as well. I, if anyone tries to watch this video about the sand on now, I'm not going to have a fucking clue what's going on. It's true. I mean, it took me a while to come up with this strategy. I mean, I, it, it began when I was playing the works computers, but I kind of... When I played it this time round, I have came up with some better strategies. The idea of refueling the walruses using the fuel pods. I mean, that is what they're designed for. The fuel pods are designed for one walrus to refuel another. And it just occurred to me that you could use two walruses, sacrifice one to refuel the other, and then that walrus can go to us as far. Yeah. Allowing you to take more islands. Islands that normally you'd have to waste time taking the carrier down. Because, I mean, if the carrier is going over one side of the map, it means it can't be elsewhere. Yeah, basically, I'm sitting on the runway here. Yeah, that's uh, Manta 4 has been damaged. When I was flying over the island, you noticed there were volcanoes yeah. all spewing. All right, you got hit by some detritus from yeah, the volcano. Yeah, Manta 4 is getting hit by stuff spewing. It's only doing a little bit of damage, about 3%, but yeah, you've got to be aware of that. The volcanoes do damage yeah. her. Right, that's a barred land. I mean, they did actually bring out a, a sort of spiritual successor to this game called uh, Gaia Mission, which I actually did buy on Steam, played it for half an hour, and was so disappointed I never went back to it. <laughs> well, that's the thing with DOSBox, you, you know, or, or even if you want to play the Amiga or the ST one, you've got emulators with which to do it, so that's what I find when people say to me about playing new games. It's like, well, there's so many thousands of games that. I haven't played, and I'd rather a game look like a video game rather than a film. I'd rather go back and play them. It's the same here. I mean, I've got nothing against you know, the newer stuff. I mean, some of it is very impressive. I mean, I played The Last The Last of Us last year, you know, years after the fact, and I was very impressed with the story. But the game, yeah, not so much. So Stavros is being attacked now. Yeah, Stavros is being attacked now, so launch all your manners, get them off the blooming runway. <laughs> essentially his mentors and you can see him flying yeah. around you know, you know shooting up my defenses 
But the first thing you've got to do is locate the enemy carrier. Now, the, the thing is, it don't show up on radar, so you you can't see it. I mean, you can see all the other things on the island, all the missile emplacements. and So basically, you've just got to fly around until you You've just got to him. fly around until I spot him, you know. So he can be off of any side of the island, you know, north, east, south, west. So, and he's generally a few kilometres off the island. So essentially, you've just got to fly around now and just hope you find him. Preferably before his drones shoot you down. Yeah, that would be. Uh, so because preferable. it's a defence island, it, the, my drones are keeping him busy. So that does help. Yeah. It means he's much less likely to shoot my men. I mean, my drones, they'll leave me alone, obviously. See, there's one of his men as they're flying past. Yeah, so you'd think he was out that way, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, essentially, where his men are gives you an. Gives you uh, an indication of where he's hanging around. But so far, I'm like, no, I haven't spotted anything. Yeah, someone shot at me there. You see the missile chasing me, but it yeah. didn't reach me. I mean, the missiles are quicker than your manners, even at top speed, so you can't outrun anything. And you don't get any uh, ECM systems in this, you know, like chaff or flares. Yeah. This is a case of it's going to hit you, it's going to hit you. Yeah, it's going to hit you. I mean, you can try diving, climbing, and doing evasive maneuvers and pray the missile don't stay on your towel, but. Oh, man, the one's telemetry's weak. <laughs> I've gone out of range of the one with the comms pod. I'm going all over the place. Oh, man, the two's been dashed. There's someone shooting at me. Another Manta there, another one of his enemy Mantas. I mean, they're, they're in the vicinity. Look, they're shooting. <laughs> I've just lost Manta one. I was getting attacked by two, two of his enemy Mantas there. Yeah, there's one there. There's another Manta three now. He's elusive, isn't he? There he is. He was elusive, wasn't he? <laughs> you notice he do not sharp on the radar. It's no, he don't. Just shoot all your missiles in and they just crash in or in with do a little bit of extra damage. Then go to Manta 2, and now you know where he is. He's basically off the I think it was the east of the island, wasn't it? Oh I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I think he was uh, 90 degrees. I think that's where he was. Yeah, obviously it's a good idea to take out your position. Man, four still on the runway. I don't know how that didn't get destroyed. I think I just got lucky there. Because essentially, if Manta 4 gets destroyed, that's the comms pod gone and all your Manta's just crashed. Yeah, Manta 3's just gone, apparently. Yeah, I lost Manta 3 as well. Well, Manta 3 was the one I've crashed into him. Man at one got shot, there he is. Yeah, he's off of uh, the east of the island. See, look, the enemy carrier's trying to run away because he's damaged. Man at two's damaged. <laughs> uh, man at four, I got so lucky here. Literally, I turn and there he is. <laughs> How about that for luck? Yeah. Man at four just happened to be in range. Yeah, where the enemy carrier was. Bang, bang. Yeah, even took down one of his mantles. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to land, wasn't it? And there was nothing to land on. So, effectively, you could finish the game there, but you chose to go for complete total domination. So this, <laughs> this is, we've skipped forward a little bit here. Yeah, now basically, you have to take the remaining islands. Essentially, the island I'm trying to take here is, I think it's a defence island, Somnus. A defence islands are very difficult to approach with a carrier. If you come even within a few kilometres, it will start shooting at you and the little drones will hammer you with missiles and your carrier won't last very long. So the best thing to do is essentially take it out with your planes. So basically what you're saying is even though the uh, main enemy has been destroyed, all these 
robot factions remain yeah. the same. So you've still got that lot of islands to take. Yeah. So you've still effectively got half the map to do. Yeah. Essentially, I'm sending over four mantas here to outpost. Which is quite a way up towards the right hand end of the map. I think the rest of the video now is pretty much demonstrating the three different types of islands and the best ways of or the various ways you can take an island. I mean, the simplest way, I remember when you first showed me on the ST, the simplest way of like, taking Thermopylae is just to take a manta out and shoot it full of missiles. I mean, that is the easiest way of taking any base. You just shoot it full of missiles, crash the manta into it, you know, base destroyed, and then stick your one on there. Yeah. But that's the easiest way. But if it's a lightly defended isle, uh, like a Fatio resource isle, and you don't need the mantis, you can just drive up to it with a carrier, blast it with a laser cannon or your missiles, so basically your cruise missiles, or you can just simply drive a warus onto it and shoot it back. You know, there, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Use a command centre virus bomb if it ain't the PC version. It's a PC version's a little bit finicky is the word you're looking for yeah i mean in my various playthroughs it was like sometimes the virus bomb would work perfectly and it would take the island and other times the game would literally just stop and it's like oh, well, <laughs> that's the end of that well you can save the game you know all all the 16-bit actually i think every version of the same go save game feature yeah I'm, well i'm not sure about the eight bits but you would have thought so I mean, even the Commodore 64 game, even probably, though it was, though it was quite nice, but yeah. But yeah, you can save the game here. I mean, the PC version being hard drive based, there's no loading. You know, literally, it's just instant. You can have any number of save games. I mean, the ST and Amiga versions. I dare say by now, they've probably come out with uh, WHD versions for uh, uh, the Amiga version. So you can install it on hard drive. Uh, yeah, back in the day, it would have been probably a blank disc, isn't it? Yeah. Or <laughs> well, one of those awful games where you actually saved it onto the yeah. uh, program disc and then you're at risk of corrupting the entire yeah. game. Did that once with Stunt Car Racer. Oh, yeah, I did that with something as well near me. I can't remember what it yeah, was. It corrupted the damn disc, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Some games are smart. I know Dungeon Master, it would be like, that's the Dungeon Master disc, you know, can't save to that. <laughs> and it wouldn't let you. Yeah, even if it weren't right protected, it still wouldn't write to it. No, I mean, I'd rather have a, a, a spare blank disc. I mean, how hard is it to write a label that says either the older save disc or something rather than saving yeah. it to disc free or whatever it bloody saved it to? Yeah, on that I, I was always a bit wary about the ones that did save to the original disc because. Yeah, you've only got so many read and writes to a disc, haven't you? Yeah, yeah it's, it's true. Dungeon Master, I totally broke that. I broke two versions of DM. My original Dungeon Master disc, that I played it so much the label fell off. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've still got that actual label. It's filthy and faded, but that's all I've got left of the disc. <laughs> See, I've, I've found when um, when I dug this, the Commodore 64 stuff back out, when I'm going through the games, the survival of magnetic media on the tapes is a lot better than on this. Like on the yeah. tapes, I think I had about one out of 70 or 80 tapes that didn't work where the discs was was 50 50 or maybe 60 40 in favor of them not working anymore it's true yeah i'm actually going to the northernmost island on the map now splinter uh while the manners are dealing with outpost i'm pretty sure this is a defense island so keep keep the keep manor four back because that's the one with the comms pod don't use that and go in with Manta 1 first of all and have a look at the island and see what it is. So do you always put the pod on Manta 4 so it's just easier to remember yeah. which one's got it? Yeah, basically. No, no, it's a factory island. <laughs> factory islands are lightly defended. They generally won't shoot at your planes. I mean, it will shoot at the Warruses if you try to go on the island, but it won't shoot at the Manta for the most part. So yeah, just basically get rid of the base. And then you can just take crash one, yeah. just crash man or one. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need that anymore. Yeah, yeah, screw recycling, just put it in the floor. <laughs> right now, Warus 2 has actually reached outposts, so yeah, just put it away. Yeah, sometimes it will say not a sort of place for an ACCB because you're trying to drop it on the runway and it will not build it there. So, if you, if you go to an island and drop your ACCB on there. 
has, has he got to rebuild everything again, or do you get what's on the island? Uh, well, essentially, if well, is it, as, we, as we already said, if it's a virus bomb, it just takes it, and everything's now yours. If you, say, destroy a factory island, and you build a factory island, you might interrupt the dismantling process and it'll start building them again. Right. But if you build a different island, like you take a factory and put a defence, it dismantles everything right, and okay. rebuilds it all again. So it's probably a good idea to match the island, unless it's one you want to be strategic, like you might want a defence island. Yeah. One thing I have noticed though is the enemy carrier has a really nasty tendency to build defence islands. <laughs> you tend to encounter them far more often than you do a... Uh, a resource and factory. Well, he didn't do him much good in this game, did he? Seeing as you shot him out of the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is one of those games that I really wish they would make. And I'm not talking like Guy Mission, I'm talking about a proper remake. It does all that wobbling there because you've gone on the island at a diagonal and it don't like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, you, you're talking about a remake. I mean, if you look at um, Elite Dangerous, and I don't want to get into for people with comments about what they think of Elite Dangerous, I know it's, it's a very divisive game. But if you could make a version of this game and make it look the same sort of quality as Elite Dangerous, so it doesn't look like it's real, but it looks really, really good. You know, because this, you know, the graphics on this are comparable to front, uh, Frontier, aren't they? Yeah, so, so. So yeah, so, so something like it's made, made in the same way as Elite Dangerous has been done, I think would look really, really nice and not be too over the top. Yeah, there's several games I'd like to see remade, but by remade, I don't mean turned, in, turned into a modern third per, first or third person ship. I'd rather they kept the original, the spirit of the original game. Like this has actually skipped forward into the video now, hasn't it? Yeah. I've actually turned up at a front here, which is a factory island. And what I've done is I've turned the carrier around and I'm backing it into the island. I oh, know it's a resource island. Basically, I've turned the laser can. I've got the drones out as well. The drones will deflect well, like it says, missile in for carrier. Yeah. The, the missile launchers have detected that I'm too close to the island and now they're attacking me. But the drones will decoy those missiles. Well, that's the stuff that's in the, f the little sort of like pyramids on the side. Yeah, yeah. Drones. They're basically explosive and, and they deflect incoming missiles. Just keep putting them out. And at the same time, basically just target that damn base and launch some uh, viewing drones. The viewing drone allow you to fire the uh, cruise missiles. The, the drones have got quite a long range, as you can see my laser shots. Interesting the way the lasers aren't instantaneous. <laughs> it's probably just simulated fire, isn't it? Yeah, like oh, the tracer rounds. Yeah, the carrier's just grounded. Yeah. You can see the missile travelling towards it. I went too close to the island. <laughs> That's just been going past there, isn't right, it? Right, front is now a free island to those missiles destroyed it. So, yeah, the drones, they you can have them in any position around the carrier, but obviously I want them at the rear here because that's where the missiles are aiming. Once the island's destroyed, the missile attack ceases. That's one way of taking an island. If it's a lightly defended island, resource or factory, back up the carrier to the island and just let it have it with missiles and lasers. Yeah, I like that aerial view. That was good. Put the drone you throw up in the air. Yeah, when I actually originally played it, I had absolutely no idea how any of this stuff worked. I mean, I knew how to get the carrier from place to place. Uh, but it took me a while to get to grips with the idea that the missile launcher is at the back of the carrier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the enemy, the enemy carrier can actually shoot in both directions. He can shoot backwards and forwards, but you can only shoot backwards. So you have to be facing away from what you want to shoot at. Well, that's it. I mean, do you think about it? Things like Star Trek and and even war films, you know, set on Earth. Um, Things always shoot going forwards, don't they? So of course, having having a shot out the back is is yeah. is a completely new concept. That's true. <clears throat> I mean, the damage the carrier takes as well is dependent on where that system's located on the ship. So if you keep getting hit in the rear, it damages the engines and the missile launcher. If you keep getting hit in the mid the midship, it damages the lift, uh, the flare launcher, and if you get hit in the uh, the front, uh, the bow. It damages uh, 
the laser cannon, the viewing, or the viewing, uh, the uh, viewing tower. So yeah, essentially, if you are getting attacked, you want to orientate the carrier in a way that you don't lose the system you're using, like the laser cannon. That's why I have the laser cannon on high priority because that's the system that you can use to shoot down incoming fire. Especially if, if the enemy carrier shows up, you've at least got something to defend yourself with because you probably won't have time to launch anything before he's all over you. I've sent out more, more manners here to take another island elsewhere on the map. I mean, earlier on, it actually said all my manners crashed because they all ran out of fuel. I tried to take them uh, too far. Yeah. You've got to watch that. I mean, they, they've only got about only got about two. There's one circling me now. Got to watch your crash. Another one. But yeah, they've only got a range of about two grid squares. So if you try to go much more than that, it's no good going a full two grid squares and then expect to circle for like five minutes because you probably won't get away with it. But it's another factory island again, lightly defended. As long as you don't fly over the missile launchers. You should be okay. You can land on the enemy runways as well, by the way. Oh, all right. Which is kind of amusing. I mean, they will shoot at you. City is now free island. Man, the one has been destroyed. Do you know what? If I had a quid for every time one of your things has been destroyed while watching this going, I'd probably have about 32 quid. <laughs> Actually, I think it's this bit here where my man has all run out of fuel. I'm trying to get them over to Twilight. I don't think they make it, though. You have got to watch that. You know, the amount of games where I literally forgot to send the supply drone out and the carrier ran out of fuel about one minute after getting out of range of the island. And it was like, that's it, it's going over, you're stuck. There's literally nothing you can do. Another thing I found out playing it this time as well is you cannot win by simply taking Nemesis. What I did was I took the carrier as far over to the right of the map as I could, and then I loaded up all four Warruses, well, three Warruses with fuel pods, and one Warrus with the ACCB, and I literally took all four Warruses as far over as I could to the right. And I got to Nemesis, destroyed it with the planes, took the island, so I've taken his base island, and it wasn't game over. <sighs> You don't win by simply taking his base island. I mean, technically, you've won already because you've destroyed him, haven't you? Yeah, all you've got to do is... Uh, it is possible to get yourself blown up. Yeah. Believe me, when you try to attack a, a, a defence island, it, it will destroy your carrier. When it says missile heading for carrier, when it, with a defence island, it's more like missile, 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 missile. <laughs> About four of them come at you at once, and you've got all the little drones shooting at you as well. Essentially, you won't last very long against the defence island, so don't approach them. So that's another resource island, so lightly defended. Yeah, so you can stick the drones out and then just blow it up. Yeah, basically. Not sure what I'd do here. Do I I'll go in close? Oh no, I'm going to use a warrus. That looks a bit... Yeah, we'll just take some missiles and... Carry seven of so you got a payload, so two tons, I think, for that. I mean, a lot of what you see in this game is actually coming true in real life. Uh, coming true in real life. I know carriers, they've been experiment, experimenting with chemical lasers for quite a while now huh? on carriers. And the same with like a uh, reactive armor. You know, the idea of armor that is ablative, as in it explodes and the explosion deflects explosion. Yeah, you know, a lot of the stuff that I remember someone at college scoffing at the idea of this game, saying, Oh, it's like the Starship Enterprise, it will never be possible, it's all sci fi. And I said, You know, you mark my words, one day all this will be possible. You, know, you laugh at the idea of a ship being able to travel 178 knots. What about catamarans? <laughs> yeah. you know, catamarans were impossible 50 or 100 years back, and now they're not. Yeah, they're wire-guided missiles, they're very powerful as well, and it's to have them, it's destroyed. Bloody hell. So yeah, just, again, it's getting close enough to actually hit it. Though. So that's that's taking one with a walrus then? That's taking one with a walrus, yeah. But walruses, I mean, they're real, aren't they? Amphibious assault vehicles. Yeah. 
you know, and you're basically a vehicle that can travel both on the land and on water. And robot controlled drones, so they've been experimenting with them for quite a while now. Yeah, right, so we've jumped forward again now. Right, we're at Ferno now, are we? But the first thing to do is to identify the island. You know, basically see what kind of an island it is you know, before you actually take any action. I mean, obviously, if the command centre virus bombs were working right, <laughs> it'd be a lot easier to just drive on it with a warus and take the island that way. It, I've, it's slowing the game down a little bit, not much so. Still free. I was quite pleased with the time, it was like three hours. Because I think my first playthrough was more like about five. This one was very, I got very, very lucky with the enemy carrier that he attacked Stavros, another factory element. But it's still possible to lose at this point. I mean, you get your carrier shot up. I mean, yeah. The carrier can repair itself, but if you lose all your structure, it's game over and effectively it's down, mate. You're both lost. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's, <laughs> it's got to be a, a, a draw, really, if you've already blown up the enemy carrier. I'm taking out a chemical laser this time. You only get a limited number of shots with the chemical lasers. I mean, the Manta one's tied into the plane's engine, so you get an unlimited number of shots. But much weaker. Right. But the chemical laser and the warriors are very strong. You only get 40 shots. See, I lost all that. I, I lost all those men as they literally didn't make it to twilight because it was just too far. You know, it was well over a, an extra grid square. Yeah, send out this one with a chemical laser, and that way you can shoot the. Uh, Shoot the turrets that get in your way. Yeah, yeah, it was a good idea to take out the enemy's weapons. Yeah, the little, uh, you'll probably see one here, there, there are little emplacements. Some some of them uh, shoot at planes, some of them shoot at the warranties, some of them shoot at the carrier. It's got all three types. I've always loved the way they go up the beach, you know, they really properly go up like. Um, like a tank goes over a, you know, a, a yeah. hillock or something. It looks like I don't encounter anything here. Looks like I'm just going straight for the ACCB. But this time with a laser. Yeah. Not stronger than missiles, but still fairly strong. Only like 11 shots. I was sort of counting. <laughs> Essentially, it's as you can see, I'm getting very close to the end now. Yeah, yeah. Little sticks. It's just a literally, it's just a matter of you know, taking what's left. Yeah, it's, just, it's it's kind of like a game of involved chess, isn't it? Yeah, it's like any strategy game. It is pretty much coming up with a coming up with a plan and seeing it through. I mean. Midwinter, I think, is more involved. I mean, this was got me. This is what got me started on you know, kind of real-time strategy games. But mid, I must confess, I did put in my comment on Lucoza's video that when I first played Midwinter, I, I just didn't get it. I didn't understand the concept of synchronized watches, the idea that you had a team, because up to that point, I'd only ever played games that involved one person or one ship or one vehicle, and in this game. You controlled more than one person, but you controlled them asynchronously. You essentially had one person that you controlled for two hours, and you had another person you controlled for two hours, performing two people's actions. And I didn't get that, first of all. I thought, like, how, a, how are you supposed to win the game, you know, in such a short period of time with, you know, before the enemy takes the whole island over? And then it just suddenly dawned, I was after reading the instructions again. Yeah, that so, helps. <laughs> yeah, I suddenly understood that you don't control a team, you control a, you control the people individually, so they all get a go, like turn-based. Yeah. And then suddenly I understood how you were supposed to win. And, I mean, that's strategy games all over. They're not, they're not just, well, mad button, button pressing. 
Uh, I mean, this was so far. I mean, it's, it's similar to a Rebel Universe, weren't it? I mean, that was another strategy game. It's a little-known Star Trek game. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's not even on Wikipedia, Rebel Universe. I think that was the first uh, ST strategy game I played, where it involved more than just, well, might not shoot them up. Okay, that was another game all left. Yeah. I mean, I've actually, I'm not sure if I'll do a playthrough of that at some point. I mean, it's, it's one of them games that it can all go horribly wrong very quickly. <laughs> yeah. Because of those damn catastrophe ports. I remember you completing that at my house. I think there's about five different ways of completing it. You know, I think you can complete it by... Uh, uh, I think you can kidnap either the Klingon, Klingon ambassador or the Romulan ambassador. That basically will end the game. You can destroy half the Klingon fleet. That will end the game. I think you can... Uh, I think there's a way of actually getting the Romulans on your side. So basically you get a, essentially an alliance which overpowers the Klingons. There's lots of ways of actually finishing the game. It's not just one way. But it's the damn catastrophe pods. If you ever get them things on your ship, you've essentially got three weeks to get rid of them or they'll blow the Enterprise up. <laughs> the only way to get rid of them is in order to discontinue. So this, this game, there's only really two ways to complete it. It's, it's to destroy the enemy carrier. Take all the items. Take all the items. Or both. Yeah, or, yeah, or both. But yeah, I'm only about shooting it with a loader. I'm to get close enough so you can hear it's actually impacting yeah, it. Yeah, right. Yeah, we haven't seen that yet, have we? So. Essentially, it is shooting back and it's destroying my boats. You can't shoot the enemy missiles down. They do travel quite slowly. The ship's laser is fairly powerful. Yeah, it has got a laser temperature, as you can see. If the yeah. laser temperature reaches critical, it will start damaging it. And then the laser will overheat faster. And then it will go inoperative, so you don't want to fire unnecessarily. But we're almost there now. I mean, I've got pretty much all the islands. Yeah, I mean, we have cut quite a lot out of this, otherwise it would have been a three hour video. Yeah, essentially. I know I do make one cock up here. I actually sent a, I sent a, I think I sent a Warus out to a Obsidian to take it over and I bloody will put the Manta speed wrong. Yeah. I sent the Manta at full speed and it quickly went out of range of the Warus and blew it up. I didn't notice it had done it until after I'd actually completed the game and I looked back through my playroom and thought, oh, I set the speed of the meta wrong. <laughs> I was wondering why it suddenly said War is free destroyed. I thought, what, it didn't hit anything? But no, it's because I set the meta speed wrong. You've got to watch that because the meta's do go a lot quicker than the War is. It's up to 17 hours of game time now. <laughs> yeah, so the thing is, if you was playing that on the Amiga or the ST, it would be 17 yeah, you hours. You see that lone island there, that lone yeah. green island? Essentially, that's the one I missed because I set the uh, speed of the man on. So I have to backtrack a bit in order to take that. Otherwise, I probably would have finished it in under three hours. But that was, it's a bit like me crashing the walruses into the building at the beginning. <laughs> Some of the other playthroughs had far worse bloopers where I crashed all the walruses into each other. <laughs> I think I had ones where I crashed the mantas into each other. Well, perhaps you'll have to clip a bit of that so I can put it up as a screen as a little outtake. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. Yeah, some of them really were bad. Like, literally, where I I go to the island and like I, I go to take the supplies and then forget to load the fuel onto the drone and <laughs> send it out to the carrier and run out of fuel about one kilometre out of range of the island and think, oh, I forgot to refuel the carrier. That's why I always do the fuel first, you know, so you know you've done it. Yeah. Because you can't afford So you're like, I'm backtracking here to try to get that missing island. You know, White takes over uh, this island here, carrier two. I wonder if that is actually a Japanese island. It probably is, judging by the way it's spelled. Yeah, it's possible. Essentially, they're on that plate of that island. Two walruses. 
while I'm taking over the final two islands out. Yeah, I think it comes out about, must be about 20 hours. So that's how long it would take to complete normally. On the, say, the Omega version, the ST version probably would have been longer because it goes a lot slower between the islands. So it's reduced, yeah, it's reduced in a 20 hour playthrough to a three hour playthrough. Yeah. So 10 times faster. And with some careful editing, it's taking it down an hour and off. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, I mean, we could have we could have done the whole three out, but it would have, would have been a lot of repetitive. That's it. Stuff. I mean, there's only so much you can say about it once I've explained how everything works, you know, comparisons to other versions, and whatever. <laughs> there's not much else you can say. I mean, the only thing I can really add is it is one of those games, just like Midwinter, where I really I was really excited to hear about Guy Mission. I thought a sequel to Carrier Command. I honestly was hoping it was by the original programmer and no, it ended up being an absolute disappointment that I never went back to. I, I think Lucosa said the same thing. It was one of them things that he bought on Steam and then never played it because it just didn't didn't look like Carrier Command. It didn't make you think of Carrier Command. Yeah, I mean, it, you can you can tie up the graphics, but you you, you kind of want the same feel, don't well, you? Well, they tried to add first-person aspects to it, and it was like, no, <laughs> that's not what I really care about. I mean, you can't call it Carrier Command if it's like a Doom clone. Well, no, of course you can't. <laughs> yeah, the less said about them, the better. No, I played my fair share of them. In back in the day, but yeah, it's but not the sort of game I would play now. No, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I quite like, I used to quite like Duke Nukem 3D, but to be honest with you, I've played a few of the newer ones, not that many, but I don't think any have come close to uh, the amount of fun I had playing Unreal. Yeah, that's it. You know, essentially it's... I think I think like half the problem is they take themselves too seriously. One thing about Dope Shadow Warrior and some of the games is they never really took themselves seriously. I think this was a problem I had with say the newer version of Shadow Warrior. It was like the game was trying too hard. I mean all the tongue in cheek, you know, chop socky kung fu nonsense that was in Shadow Warrior. It, it had gone. And there it was trying to be a serious story and it was like I can't get on board with this. It's the same as Doke. You know, Doke was never meant to be serious. You yeah, know, certainly wasn't. Anyone that gets upset at that, saying, oh, Doke's, you know, Doke's a misogynist and he's a woman. You know, that's the point. It? it was never, it was meant to be a, it was meant to be a joke. Yeah, it certainly wasn't a commentary on, on sexual no. politics by any stretch you of know, the imagination. Doke has always been a, a larger than life, ridiculously masculine, you know, you know, hero archetype. That's the way he's always been. All these games are the same. That's why Duke Forever ended up being so disappointing because it was it was almost like they'd forgotten that. But yeah, it's funny you mentioned Unreal. I mean, I had a lot of fun with that game because just because of its conceptually alien feel. I, I actually read the other day like Unreal Four Engine. I'm thinking, yeah, it's a pity there ain't actually an Unreal Four to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems to me that Epic Games, all they cared about really was the engine. You know, they didn't really care about what they started out as, making Unreal, the game. Yeah. I don't think I have played a game that was so conceptually alien. It really did feel like you weren't actually on Earth. You'd, you'd literally stepped onto an alien world. Everything about it, the weapons, the landscape, the nully, the scar, everything about it, and the music, you know, by a German program, I think that is, it all felt so conceptually alien, and that's what I loved about it. Right, returning to Carrier Command now, here you are, heading towards the final island, Nemesis. Yeah, it looks like I've already taken that obsidian, so yeah, this is the last island. Oh no, we're right over obsidian here. It's not going to take long to... Uh... Yeah, it's almost there. Along a bit. By the time you sped that along, I'm sure. Uh... Yeah, it works once now, there. Yeah. Yeah, we're taking obsidian after I <laughs> grab 
Well, after I've destroyed the war as earlier. Yeah, that was about the only serious mistake I made in this playthrough. I, I kind of screwed up. I don't even bother where that manor is, it doesn't matter. Right, uh, Nemesis is like Vulcan, it's a special island, it's both a factory of resource and a defence all in one. Right, okay. But it's not the same as any one of those islands, but it's got bits and pieces of each. You can see it's got a rig, it's got the dome of the drones, and it's got some, a factory on it. It's got all of, all of it. Yeah, you can see the drones are already shooting at me. So I'm help. flying low, trying to avoid their missiles. Oh, it looks like I didn't destroy it. Just damaged it. Generally, the bases get tougher as the game goes on. The early ones, you can generally destroy with only a few missiles, but later on, they take more like seven, eight missiles. Well, you'd expect the main enemy islands to have a bit more difficulty to it than, than one in the middle of the map, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's more heavily defended, but it's definitely tougher to destroy the base. Again, though, you can take it using an ACCB, uh, the command send a virus bomb. If you can get on the island, you'd probably have to destroy the dome that's shooting those damn drones out. It takes him time to rebuild a new dome, so in yeah. the time it takes him to build some more, get, get more drones in the air, you might have time to get the Warus on the island and take the base over. Yeah, but it's good that, he's, that the computer has to stick to the same rules as you. It's actually facing Seaburn as well, the opening, yeah. so it wouldn't be difficult to drive up and basically, yeah. But yeah, yeah, like I say, it's nice that the, the computer's constrained by the same rules yeah. as you. You know, it doesn't cheat and instantly have a base appear or... No, he still, has to, he still has to take an island and he still has to build everything. The only difference is he hasn't got walruses, he uses his members to drop the ACCP. His carrier is, well it depends on the version, the ST and Amiga are slightly slower. Uh, this version is slightly faster. Not yeah. a lot faster, it's not like he goes ten times faster than you. He doesn't, he goes a little bit faster. He can catch you in open water. Yeah, essentially once you've taken this island, that's it. You've won. You know, whether he's been destroyed or not, you basically have still won because you've cut him off. That is, a, that is rather an easy way to win. I mean, the first two, I think one of my first playthroughs, I actually got behind his lines and I cut his supply route and I never saw the enemy carrier again after that and I took all the islands and it was game over and, and that was it. So it is possible to do it completely quite easily that way. Get behind his lines, cut him off, and then he's got no fuel, he's stranded. So we're watching your one being built there, aren't we? Yeah, essentially, once that's built, it's going over. Well, going complete. Well, there you go. I just sent 17 hours and 46 actual oh, time. Sorry. Not 20 hours after all, just under 18. Yeah, islands taken 19. Yeah, the islands taken basically refers to enemy islands taken. Yeah. It doesn't include the green islands or the three islands. Yeah. Well, that was uh, one hell of a playthrough. I'm, how you keep track of everything you do there is, <laughs> is, is beyond me sometimes. I know you've had years and years of practice there, but even so. It took, a, it, it took about a week of practice to, you know, to get into that kind of mindset. Certainly impressive to watch. Yes, oh, I just I just like strategy games. I mean, there's another reason why I like CRPGs. It's it's all the stuff you know that from our tabletop. You know, I've, I probably made a better DM than a plank. Yeah. I just got all involved with the stats. I probably got too involved with the stats. You do like stats. You're a bit of a number <laughs> cruncher, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, what a, what a what a classic strategy game, or just a classic game. I mean. All right, you're not going to get very far, but I mean, there's there's still a certain amount of fun to be able to this game on going full Grand Theft Auto on it, just taking off on a Manta and just flying to an island and shooting and stuff. It can be as much fun as playing the game properly. That's true. I used to sod about just shooting at the carrier just so I could watch the repair systems repairing all the bits. <laughs> I used to do it out of time at college. You're fascinated with the stats again, aren't you? Yeah, seeing how long it actually took for the automatic repair systems to fix the whole carrier after you'd shot it up. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Right, well, that's um, 
probably nearly an hour and a half's worth now. So at the time of recording, this is probably the longest video I've done on my channel. So uh, thanks again, mate, for uh, coming on and talking us through another one of your playthroughs. Not a problem. And uh, yeah, we will definitely see you in the next one. So until then, laters. Yeah, laters.